the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. And if you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? For the is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our own unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned, thought, and word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. So together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty oh God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Sunday in Advent is from Isaiah 64 verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, and that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From of old no one has heard or perceived by the ear. No eye has seen a God besides you who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you in your ways. Behold, you were angry and we sinned. In our sins we have been a long time, and shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. But now, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O oh Lord, and remember not iniquity forever. Behold, please look, we are all your people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
the second lesson from Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Mark, beginning at the 11th chapter. Glory be to you, o Lord. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, What are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has, has need of it and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at the door outside in the street, and they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, What are you doing untying that colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus, and they threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who were following were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us now confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to singing to us, You Are Holy. And after that, we will have the children's message and invite all other children to please come forward.
with all the other children who are here, please come forward for the children's message. Come on, Pastor. Set our minds on the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. So I'll pray and you guys pray. You guys got to echo it, okay? All right? I'll pray and then you guys pray back, okay? We pray to the Lord, okay? Heavenly Father, help me to set aside every weight of sin that is holding me back from reaching you. In the name of Christ. Amen. Well, thanks everybody for coming up here and for being up here. I have two things that I want to give you, okay? All right, this is for the little little tot. So it's got little stickers and crayons and stuff like that. And so maybe you might want to have one of those. The little tot. And we got another real one. Or little tot. Give him one of those. Older kids, older kids, older kids, a little something for you, a little for you. Yeah, we got a snack too. 
Uh, let's continue on, please, the sermon hymn, hymn 738. Hymn 738. Stay seated. today. If you don't have a church home, we welcome you to St. John's, not just today, but every Sunday. Uh, and we know that this is a place where God reaches and touches people's hearts and lives with the good news of Jesus. So glad that each of you are with us today. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. What is grace? God's riches at Christ's expense. Okay, our sermon text for today is in your bulletin from Hebrews 12, verses 1 through 3. <clears throat> Excuse me. Therefore, since we, who's the we? Us. Us. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not, not grow weary or faint hearted. Let's pray. Father, the only way that we can not grow weary and not become faint-hearted in a world saturated in sin and brokenness, in disease and despair, in hatred and violence, is for you to carry us along. We need your presence in our lives. We need the hope that the world can't take away from us which we consider today. We need a peace, a deep peace, that underlies anything that might trouble our hearts. And we desperately need a Savior, for we have backpacks full of sin. Sin from the past, and we know we will sin again in the future. But Lord, we sit here today under the umbrella of grace and forgiveness through the cross of Jesus Christ. And all we can do is say thank you for Jesus. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Last week we talked about people that God placed in our lives who have blessed us during our faith journey here on earth. And I misspoke a little bit when I gave you the instructions for filling out your list. Last week I said, don't list people who are already in heaven, but only list those who are still alive. What's wrong with that statement? They are still alive. They are still alive. Those who are in heaven are enjoying the new life with God in glory. So that's where we're going today. We're switching our focus and remembering loved ones who've gone before us, who blessed us during our faith journey, who are currently alive in heaven, and the Bible calls them the great cloud of witnesses. <clears throat> I was just I saw my friend Shane back there. Shane and I share some Christian music teams. I was just remembering uh, Mansfield's song about the great cloud of witnesses. There's a great cloud. Like, okay, that's between me and Shane. <laughs> the picture here is of a Roman amphitheater. And large crowds are surrounding and looking down on the runners below. But they're not simply watching. They're loudly screaming and cheering, encouraging the runners to finish the race and receive the prize. So Paul says, let us run the race with endurance. And to do so, let us cast off every weight that slows us down and every sin and seeks to trip us up. 
I don't know, Steve's a lot holier than I am because my backpack would be a lot heavier than his. <laughs> but who is in the great cloud of witnesses? In Hebrews 11, just before our text this morning, the Holy Spirit listed a, a bunch of names of them. When we look into the stands, he says there's Abel and Enoch, there's Abraham and Isaac. Noah is down below the Colosseum tending to the animals. Line up, line up. No, no, I said by twos, by twos. <laughs> There's Moses with the staff raised, sitting beside a man in a many colored coat. There's Joshua blowing a horn, a shofar to cheer us forward. David sits in the suite of kings, Isaiah in the suite of prophets. And there's Samson in the middle. And we see him as far away from the stone pillars as possible. <laughs> However, the Spirit writes, I don't have time to name them all. But these are commended to you for their faith. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us run the race that's marked out for us. Now, these are not witnesses who are someone who maybe saw a car accident and they're giving a report. And these are not witnesses who necessarily just speak something to someone, these people bear witness to us of what it means to have faith in Jesus Christ. They are witnesses in themselves to the glory that awaits you and me when we get to the finish line. And we are encouraged by their testimony. These witnesses all have three things in common. First, we're told they lived their lives on earth by faith. Second, they're all dead, because Hebrews 11 says they all die in the faith. But third, they're all alive, because they've been given new life in eternal Jesus. Jesus said this, If a person believes in me, even though he dies, he shall live. Amen? Amen. Amen. There are six things, I think, I want to go through very quickly. Six things that we can learn from Christians who have gone before us. First of all, they give witness to the example of faith by the way that they lived their life <clears throat> and ran their race. We can remember how they served Jesus. We can remember how they loved the Lord. We can remember how they trusted God when things were tough in life. We can remember how they loved to be in worship and pray and sing the songs of faith. When you and I are struggling to run the race, we can look in the stands and see those who've gone before us and remember how they ran by faith even when it was hard to keep running. Secondly, we can remember not only how they ran the race, but how they finished the race. We can remember that as they grew weaker, their faith in God grew stronger. We can remember how as they neared the finish line, they got tired began to look forward to the rest that would come after the race. We can remember the peace they had as they stopped looking back at this world and turned their eyes and hearts toward the goal of heaven. Thirdly, these folks give witness to the truth that you and I are saved by grace. What is grace? God's riches at Christ. We're saved only by God's free gift of forgiveness and eternal life <clears throat> for Jesus' sake. Because look at the people up in the stands who are cheering us on. There's Noah, who got drunk and fell asleep naked, hung over in front of his daughters, right after God saved him from the flood. There's Moses with blood on his hands from committing murder down in Egypt. <clears throat> There's David sitting next to Bathsheba, the woman that he stole through murdering her husband and he committed adultery with. There's Jacob, the deceiver. There's Samson, the sexual addict. There's Sarah, who laughed at God. There's Job, who screamed at God. There's Rahab, who was a prostitute. There's Matthew, who greedily cheated the Jews. There's the thief that hung on the cross next to Jesus. But we can also see some of our loved ones there. We knew that when they were here, we loved them. But one thing we also knew is they weren't perfect. 
We know they had their faults. But you and I are blessed to know that none of that could keep them from heaven because they trusted in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Every time we slip up because we sin or fall down, we can look up and be encouraged by others who also fell down but still received the crown of eternal life by God's gift of grace. The fourth thing they give witness to when we look to the heavenly stands and see our loved ones cheering us on is they give witness to the faithfulness of God. The faithfulness of God. Because we see no matter how hard their race was, no matter how many burdens they had to carry, no matter the number of times they stumbled and fell, no matter how Satan screamed in their ears, no matter the potholes and detours along the way, no matter the drops of sweat when the race became hard, or the tears of anguish when running became painful, God was faithful to carry them through and bring them safely to the finish line. Brothers and sisters, I know there are days when you feel like you can no longer run the rat race of life. Days when your spirit just gets so tired, you don't think you can go on. Days when you can't see where to put your foot down because your eyes are filled with tears. Days when the effort it takes to go forward by faith in God seems almost impossible. When those days come, look to the stands and look for the face of that loved one you know who also ran a tough race during life. But look at them now. See the joy twinkling in their eyes. See the aura of peace that surrounds them. See the contentment on their face that says they are free from strain and pain of running. And hear your loved ones cry out to you, Trust in God, for God will carry you to the finish line. I know, because that's what God did for me. A fifth witness in our text today is where to look as we run the race. The writer says, you know, it's great that we are surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses. It's wonderful that they can encourage us and cheer us on. But if you really want to run the race of faith, he says, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus Christ. Our loved ones who have gone before us are encouraging examples. But Jesus is far more than that. Jesus is the beginner, the foundation, the perfecter of the faith by which you and I are saved and walk this world. Jesus went to the cross, carrying with him all the stuff in our lives that would keep us from claiming the prize. By faith in Jesus' death and resurrection, God declares you and I as victors even before we get to the finish line. Jesus started our race in our baptism. The Lord gave us his spirit, pointed us down the track. And throughout our life, Jesus uses his word and his spirit to propel us along. We make pit stops to this place called worship, where Jesus refills our spiritual tank for a few more laps of life. In Holy Communion, Jesus uses forgiveness to repair the bumps and dents and brokenness of life that's banged us around. In the church, Jesus gives us teammates to run the race. Teammates that run beside us. But most of all, Jesus gives us himself. For when we are weak, he is strong. When things are dark, he is the light. When we get lost, he runs after us and lovingly brings us back. And as we keep our eyes, our focus on Jesus, all the obstacles and the road that lie ahead of us, all grow dim as our hearts are filled with his love for us. And we find that it is his love that is carrying us on the course. And finally, we learn from the cloud of witnesses who are encouraging us that when you and I reach the finish line, they'll be there waiting for us. I know that my mom is cheering on all those who run the race and I know Gwen's mom is encouraging all the racers to finish. I know our son James is there, and my two best friends, Jeff and Mickey. But I also know this. 
that they will rise up in special excitement, make their way down to the finish line, so that when Gwen and I come around that corner one last time, they will welcome us with open arms. So, we look to Jesus, we look up to Jesus, so we can look forward to heaven. Amen? Amen. And to that reunion with the great cloud who's gone before us. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as our hearts are sad, as we continue to grieve for those that we miss, our hearts are filled with joy today as we are reminded of the wonders that they are currently blessed with in heaven and by the assurance that we also will be with them around the throne of Jesus singing praises for eternity. Bless and keep us in true faith for Jesus' sake. Amen. Thank you. the end of the year we celebrated this service commemorating those who've gone before us there is an insert in your bulletin today which has our prayers <coughs> has a list at the top of loved ones who were members here called to glory last year and then throughout the bulletin there are others that we are remembering this day <coughs> let us remember with thanksgiving those who've gone before us with the sign of faith. Heavenly Father, they were given life by you, so they might praise and worship you forever. You gave them new life in their baptism and the gift of faith. You fed them as your children in your holy supper. And you called them into a closer presence with you, that they now worship you in undisturbed joy and peace. <clears throat> While we remember this day all our loved ones who have received their crown of glory, we take a moment to especially recall those of our fellowship at St. John's carried home to God this year. For Larry Eugene Bowman, born 7-19-1939, called to glory Christmas Day 2022. For Michael Wayne Rowe, born July 14, 1960,
63. Called to glory February 26, 2023. Vanessa Ann Picone, born 1031, 1981. Called to glory 415, 2023. For Michael Wayne Long, born 926, 1947. Called to glory 828, 2023. For those of previous years, for those not named, for those we remember with love, we give thanks to you individually as we lift those names in our hearts. O oh God, in grace and glory, we give you thanks for the blessing that these loved ones were to us during their time on earth. We give you thanks for your gift of faith and eternal life to them and to us. Keep us in true faith in Jesus until we are called to meet our Savior and to reunite with those gone before us. Bless your name, O oh Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please rise for prayer. Let's pray for the whole church of God and in Christ Jesus for all people according to their needs. Gracious Lord, sustain your saints to the end as we enter another church year. Encourage the preachers of your word and all who hear that the testimony about Christ may be confirmed among us as we wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Give boldness and faithfulness to Matthew, our synodical <coughs> president, our district president, our circuit visitor, and all pastors in Christ. Renew the faith and quicken the love of all Christians, that we may be enriched in all speech and knowledge. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, grant your blessing to all marriages, Keep all husbands and wives faithful to each other. Guide them as they care for their children entrusted to them by you. Bestow your loving care upon all children who have suffered abuse or neglect, as well as upon all who open their homes to children in foster care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, behold our nation and its leaders. <coughs> Protect our armed forces. Keep them under your care and blessing. <coughs> Guide and keep all those those who are at war, bring peace and healing to those nations, and guide us, Father, to do the will of your work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Visit us with your compassion, O oh Lord. Deliver those who are sick, those who are troubled in their afflictions, those who are grieving sorrow and, and dying from sickness and ill. We especially pray for those that are on our hearts, for a moment of silence. Lord God, Heavenly Father, may all who cry to you, seeking your healing and your grace, may they receive it abundantly and know that you are with them with your caring hand. Lord, in your mercy. First of all, Lord, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, enter Jerusalem to shouts and cheers of joy. Grant that we may be stirred also by this word and sacrament that we will now enjoy anew. Let that be his second advent to us as we partake in our, at the holy table. May it be to our benefit and strengthen our faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Gracious Father, you have, made us, you have made us glad to enter your presence today, to hear your good news of our Savior and receive your gifts. Preserve your church against all of our enemies. Lead us to walk in your ways, to follow your paths, 
that when Jesus returns in his glory, we may welcome him with glad hosannas as he once was as he entered Jerusalem. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now go to the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks for grace. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally, because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity. All who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
the body and blood of Jesus, strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto that wondrous gift of life everlasting. May he fill you with his peace. We join together in the Nook de Minas. Go in his peace and serve the Lord. Amen. 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 Have a great week.